Hello everyone, welcome again for the third episode of Telspire Building Tips. Today we're going to be looking at the macro to micro method for building and how to start your hero asset. As you have seen in the latest episode, we've already prepped the size of our board here. We've defined the size of our board with the sketch we've done in the previous episode, so it's now easy to see approximately which size we're going to build with. What I would recommend in most cases is to first lay down a foam floor to sketch out the basic shape. Then we'll work, as I said in the title, to macro to micro. The goal here is to block out the shape first and then we'll add details. This will, this will allow you to quickly see if there is an issue with your design and also have more ID along the way. To do this, in our case, because we want to have elevation and be able to build to build the ceiling, the base level zero of our terrain need to be higher. We already know, following the sketch we've done, that the lowest point will be here and the house should be located around here at the highest point of the map. There will be probably multiple layers, a few trees over there and a few trees over there if I remember correctly. So let's start. Because we want to add some height, we'll grab some walls. I think the Morgoth wall will make a nice contrast with the board I want to build. Obviously this step is not mandatory and you can change everything you want about it, the type of wall or anything, or you can just not do this method, but I find it rather pleasing aesthetically and easy to master and understand. It's a good grid to start a build that has multiple height level or multiple floors. So like that, really quickly, we can already see the volume we can play with. What I want to do next is I'm going to shift middle click to grab the foam and I'm going to place it so that I'm start building my base shape of my terrain. I have to remember that I will be placing my dirt and my earth on top of this foam. So the foam will be one layer down or one layer more deep than what I intend to be the final for the final result. And like that, I'm just going to build all my board with a little bit of clipping. Uh, this is not an issue right there because I'm going to delete those tiles afterwards. This is just a template for me to work on. Right now, you can see that we have a really interesting shape. This shape will of course evolve and get more detail with time, but we have already a good base to work with. The next step after blocking out your main terrain is blocking out the main asset. I'll always do that first because the main asset is the most important um, piece of your board. What the player will be looking at the most or what is the most important or the most central to your board. Central does not mean really to be in the center, but really that everything I'll be doing will be centered around it. So if here my main asset is a house, everything I do, like the path or the trees or the crops or the ceiling or anything really, any props I will, I will put, will be in relation to this hero asset. I recommend really quickly to determine the position of your hero asset and to work at blocking out the base shape of it. Here I want to make a simple house, so I'm just going to grab a castle ruin floor that I have already prepared here and I'm going to drag where I feel is best made. And I'm going to drag the basic shape of the house directly. I'm not taking care of any repetition of patterns right now, this will come in the next video and this is not a step we will take care of for now. We will also quickly 
shape out the house with some walls to determine where we want to make the first rooms. As you can see, we have a first floor and the storage space that we've already sketched on our book. Now that we have determined the basic shape of our house, and I assure you, we will add more detail later, but for now we do not care at all about any windows or anything else. We want to place the stairs. The stairs are really hard to place if you place them later. It will cause you a lot of trouble around your room agency and you need to think them quite early in your building process. To that extent, when I'm done with the basic shape of my house and I'm happy with it, I'm gonna seek a place that seems interesting to me to place some stairs. If I make the main entrance here, it will look a little bit weird to have the stairs directly here. So I can use either that wall here, and I see directly that it could make an interesting separation for a room here, a corridor here, and another room here. So you see directly with that type of process, I'm creating interesting spaces as I'm going. I'm gonna roughly place the stairs here, and you can see that one issue we have is that the walls because they're locked onto the set grid on the square and that they cannot be placed close to it, we'll probably have to change our design a little bit, but that will come in the next step. For now, the tavern stairs have an issue, meaning that they're not tall enough. So if I remove this, you can see that there is a gap between them. I'm not taking care of that because I'm quite sure this will be patched and in the grand scheme of things, when there is a block underneath, you don't realize it too much. The block is also a great way to always have stairs that are on the right scale when you place them. I can see there that my stair is too big, so I will probably put half a tile half down here, start of the first floor. Right now, I'm quite happy with what I've done. I have the basic shape of my terrain, that is done and I think it will work nicely. And I have the basic shape of my house with already a few of these of the room I want to make because I've placed the stairs beforehand. As a reminder, always start your build near the origin point of your grid that you can find with F2 on your keyboard. I also remind you to always try to work with basic shape first and we'll modify those shapes to make them more interesting in the next step. This video was a bit shorter than the others, but that's a great thing too. It means that we'll move quicker to the next step, which is breaking the patterns, where we will learn to break linearity, repetition and patterns. I hope we learned something with this video and have a good day.